Wow. What a, what a week, what a month, what a six months. It just keeps coming. So let your body get comfortable. We're going to start with um, Misha Berach because I really, I just think it's so important. I'd like to start with that prayer. And I'd like to invite you to bring to mind anyone in your life, anyone and everyone that you know of that is in need of healing, whether that be physical healing, emotional, spiritual, the people maybe in your direct circle, as well as people in the news or people in the periphery of your life as a result of the fires, as a result of COVID-19. And in addition, I would like to bring in um, Jacob Blake, who is yet another victim of merciless violence. And I would like to extend my prayers to his healing of his body and comfort to his family and just prayers for healing and for justice for, for him and for everyone. So taking a moment to close your eyes perhaps and name or bring to your mind's eye those who are in need of healing. And please feel free to join me, even though you are muted. Go ahead and join me if you'd like to in this uh, Misha Berach song. Misha Berach avoteinu mekor habracha leimoteinu. May the source of strength who blessed the ones before us help us find the courage to make our lives a blessing and let us say Amen. Mishe Behera Imoteinu Mekor Habracha Bless those in need of healing with Refua Shlema, the renewal of body, the renewal of spirit, and let us say Amen. Moda ani lefanecha, melechai vekayam. Shechazarta bi nishmachti, bechem la raba emunatecha. Raba emunatecha. I offer thanks to you, Adonai. Ever living sovereign, that you have restored my soul to me. In mercy, how great is your trust! In mercy, how great is your trust! So, I invite you to settle into a space of self-reflection and introspection in this moment. As your body settles, as you land in the place around you, on your mat or on your chair, in your room or in outdoors, wherever you are, we'll begin this morning's practice with Ayeka, with asking the question, where are you? So noticing your physical surroundings, what's true in your environment right now.
and then noticing your physical state. Bringing your attention through your entire body, doing a scan of the body from the top of the head down to the tips of your fingers and toes. Noticing anything physically. And bring attention to the state of your mind right now. And just taking a snapshot, a general snapshot of the state of your mind without getting hooked by any one stream of thoughts or following that stream of thoughts. Just noticing is your mind cluttered? Is it scattered? Is it calm? Is it spacious? Moving into the emotional body now, really letting yourself soften and receive the information that your emotional self would like to share with you today. How are you feeling emotionally? Perhaps that will come in words for you, or perhaps it will come in colors or sensations. So maybe you'll even sense a place in your body that tends to hold your emotions or this particular emotion. And then bringing your attention to your spiritual self, this spiritual body. And we are in the month of Elul, the 30 days of preparation to enter the high holy days of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. And just taking the extra opportunity to Notice how you're feeling spiritually. Do you feel spiritually connected in some way? Are you feeling lost? Wherever you are right now is okay. It's just where you are. It's your truth. So this morning we will practice, you'll have two options of pranayama or breath, uh, breath control. So it's going to depend on the information that you or body, those levels of your being gave you. So if you're feeling kind of amped up and stressed, which I'm gonna acknowledge that we can have both of these things at the same time. So whatever your first impulse is, uh, one will be if you're really, um, really jacked up, just like super stressed, you know, tight shoulders, anxious, then we want to bring in the ratio breathing of um, breathing in for four and then just softly exhaling for eight or something like that. So we want to try to lengthen the exhale, try to double that, whatever the count is for you. Just think of blowing softly through your pursed lips, exhaling nice and slow, really helping to um, engage the rest and digest part of your nervous system just to help bring down the, the nervous energy. So that's if you're feeling very anxious. The other thing, the other response that many of us have to stress is to feel really lethargic and kind of want to like freeze and just freeze, you know, just kind of not want to do anything, kind of lose, lose your impulse uh, of inspiration. So a uh, breathing technique that can be helpful for that is to go ahead and breathe into that count of four, but instead of exhaling right away to the count of eight or so, you would hold your breath. You would retain the inhale for about a count of seven. So it's called four, seven, eight. Again, the numbers aren't as important as that if you keep the same cadence, your own cadence with your inhale, your hold, and your exhale. And so if that ends up being like two, 
six, nine, whatever, right? You're just kind of breathing in, holding, and exhaling. So the retaining of the breath is actually what helps to energize the body and kind of get it out of that stuck place. So two choices, breathing in for four, exhaling for eight, keeping that connection, just not holding the breath, or breathing in for four, holding the breath for about seven, and exhaling for eight. So choose which one feels like the right match for you today and know that you can always let it go and just breathe calmly and softly um, in a way that feels good for you. So we'll do that. I'm gonna ring our bell and we'll go into that for a couple of minutes. to a natural rhythm of breathing. Bringing a hand over your heart and one hand over your belly. And taking a moment to state your own kavana, your own intention for your practice time this morning. To what will you dedicate this practice? Okay, so now we're going to move to our backs on the floor. So you'll want to use your yoga strap. Have that handy and your block handy um, in case we need it. So let's come to the back. With the knees bent. And the feet are pulled in close to the buttocks. And they're also about hip width apart. So my feet are about lined up with the frontal hip bones. Sometimes that's hard to get a sense of. Most of the time people will have their feet out a little too wide. So you might even like take a peek and see if you look from side to side, you shouldn't really be able to see the sides of your ankles. So if that's the case, then you want to bring your feet in a little bit closer to each other. And then just slide your shoulders down your back. And then bring your fingertips to your frontal hip bones or maybe thumbs, whatever can touch the frontal hip bones and start to do a little bit of pelvic tilting. So as we inhale, we arch the lower back and create a little space between the lower back and the floor. 
And as we exhale, we engage the belly and press the lower back into the floor, almost like you're going to start to lift your hips, but you don't lift your hips. And just rocking forward and back, just noticing how the hips feel. So this is really helpful for the lower back, mobility in the hips. Breathing in and out. Come to center, so just let your sacrum, the flat bone at the bottom of your spine, let the sacrum just lay on the floor. And imagine the sacrum now is placed on top of a clock face. So when you arch your back and you create that little arch, the tailbone is going to touch 12. As you tuck your tailbone, then you touch six o'clock. So 12 and six. And then start to move your hips without your knees moving. Just start to move your sacrum in circles and try to touch all the hours on the clock face. We'll go both directions, so pick whether you're going counterclockwise or clockwise. And just slowly, with your fingertips on your hips, just slowly start to move the sacrum, and you'll feel that you go into smaller versions of the spine being in flexion and extension. Are there any hours on the clock that you skip over? If so, slow down and try to keep the knees from wobbling around too much. Go ahead and pause at center so the sacrum is resting right in the middle of the clock and then change direction. Keep the breath flowing. Couple of more circles around your clock. And then let your back rest, let your shoulders rest. So we're gonna knock the knees in toward each other. So lean in the knees and then walk the feet out to the sides now so that you don't have any effort happening in the lower body. And We'll release the neck here. So reaching the right arm up overhead and back behind you and look over your left shoulder at the same time. And then bring everything back to center. Inhale the left arm up and look over your right shoulder. And then exhale everything back to center. So make sure that you do one full um, arm lift and lower before you start with the other arm. So at no point should both arms be off of the ground. Inhaling as you reach up and turn the head. And exhaling as you come back to center. Now this is a great way to help calm the nervous system. If you chose the 4-8 breath, you could inhale and reach up to the count of four and then slow down the movement and the exhale to the count of eight. That's always an option. We'll do one more set on each side. Let your hands rest by your sides. And then bring your knees into your chest and give them a squeeze, stretch out your lower back. Do some ankle rotations. And now we'll use our straps. So bring your uh, left foot to the floor with the knee bent, and then just bring the strap around your right foot. 
and make the choice whether you'd like to straighten your left leg or keep it bent. So flexing the right foot quite a bit, we really wanna point those toes toward our face and straighten the leg as much as you can. If there's a little bend in your knees, it's okay. We're just looking to open up the back of the leg and breathe here. And start to draw little tiny circles on the ceiling with your heel. Paying close attention to what's going on in the hip and groin area as you do these circles. Where do you feel the stretch in your leg? Pause at the center and then start to internally rotate your whole leg. So the toes will point to the center, the whole foot is gonna turn inward and the whole leg will as well. And then externally rotate the leg. So the movement looks like it's just in your foot but the whole leg is moving so that the thigh bone, that femur is stirring deep in the hip socket. And just slowly go inward, outward, so the foot stays um, pointed straight up and the foot is flexed so good and now pause here and take the straps in your left hand and start to cross your body so at this point in time you might straighten your left leg to create some room to cross the body and cross to where you feel an outer hip stretch or maybe some of you will wanna have a little bit more of a twist here, listening to the wisdom of your body and not pushing to where the ego says you should go. Keep breathing. And then a little bend in that right knee brings the leg back up. Go ahead and change hands with your strap. So start to open the leg out to the right and keep your left hip rooted into the floor or into the ground. Just looking for that inner thigh stretch. Full deep breaths with a slight engagement of the lower abdominals to keep the back stable. Go ahead and bring the leg back up to center and release your strap. From here, we'll take our figure four stretch. So cross your right ankle over your left thigh or knee and hold on to the back of your left leg. Flex both feet and breathe into the hip. So I mentioned in our Elul class on Sunday night that when we open the body, when we soften and open the body, we create space in our mind as well. We create space in the emotional body to feel because everything is connected. Good, release. And we'll take the second side. Strap goes around the bottom of the left foot. Right knee is either bent or straight and flex the left foot. And breathe into the back of your leg. Straighten it as much as you can. Perfect time to practice 4-8 breathing if you'd like to. And start to draw little circles on the ceiling.
go the other way. Pause at the center and internally rotate that leg. So I just call it like a key and a keyhole. So you're turning the key and unlocking the lock internally and externally rotating the leg and foot. Notice what's happening in your hip socket. Pause here and take the straps in your right hand. Maybe straighten the right leg and cross the body to a place that feels right for you today. Bring your left arm out to a T shape. And then bend the left knee a little bit, bring it to center, and then switch hands and start to open the leg out to the side, keeping the right hip on the floor as much as possible engaging the abdominals. If you don't engage the abdominals, you'll notice that your leg kind of wants to just keep falling. So keep the, the belly pulled in, which will create some safety for your lower back. Good, bend the knee slightly, bring it back up. Holding the straps, giving yourself another last stretch here in the middle. And then release your strap and take your figure four stretch on this side, left ankle over right knee. And notice your jaw and see if there's any tension in the jaw that you could release. Good, release this side, stretch your legs out, stretch your arms overhead, reach with your fingertips and your toes, just full body stretch, and then release, hug your knees back in towards your chest, and then roll to your side and help yourself up. And we'll do some cat cow to move the spine, rounding the back and then arching the back. So that's very small movement that we made on our backs. For the lower back and pelvis, now we're extending that extension into the whole spine. Good. Connecting with your breath, so inhaling as you arch and look up. Good, and then exhaling, rounding, pulling the navel in, emptying out all the air, and then starting to let yourself play. So I like to side bend and get into the rib cage. You could lift your right foot off the floor and wag it like a tail, and then, and then side bend at the same time. So trying to look at that tail wagging. Keep your belly pulled in as you do that. And then placing the right foot down, lifting the left foot and same thing, wag that tail. Good. And place that foot down and then go ahead and open up the knees and take a child's pose reaching those arms out in front of you if that feels good placing your head on the floor and return to shuva come back to your intention why are you here this morning to what are you dedicating your practice
Okay, go ahead and come on up. We are going to come to the top of our mat with block or blocks handy. So for Elul, one of the practices, our traditional practices to read the Psalms, to read extra Psalms, and particularly to read Psalm 27. So I have this really beautiful book. I'm gonna come here and show it to you. Oop, can you see it? Kind of opening. Opening your heart with Psalm 27. So it's written by Rabbi Deborah Robbins. Her um, poetry goes with each of the verses of the whole Psalm 27. So she divides up the Psalms and she pretty much just expounds on them creatively with her own reflections. I find them to be really beautiful. So on Sunday we did one of the verses. T today we're doing another one. Um, so what I'll have you do is use your ball and start massaging your right foot. And while you're massaging your foot, I'm going to read this one verse to you. And then we're going to start to embody and explore the meaning. So this is from verse 4 of Psalm 27. And she calls it 100 times a day. So in this line in Hebrew, there is a word me'et. And the word me'et is related to the word me'ah, which means the number 100. So that'll make more, more sense in a minute. So as in, one thing I've asked a hundred times, oh God, this do I seek. So the line is, one thing I have sought from Adonai, how I long for it, that I may live in the house of Adonai all the days of my life that I may look upon the sweetness of Adonai and spend time in the palace. So in that first line with the word uh, May 8, it's translated as if the writer is saying, I've asked this a hundred times of you, Adonai. I've asked this a hundred times. Okay, switch feet. So she starts this writing, this piece. She said, first, it sounds like I'm nagging. If I've asked you once, I've asked you a hundred times. Next, I start to sound focused. I'm not asking for a lot, not a hundred things, just one thing, and it's the most important to me. Then I remember the Talmud's spiritual practice, offer 100 blessings a day. All day, ask God for one thing, 100 different ways. Please receive my prayer. I am alive in your house, and I am so very grateful. Okay, so we'll stop there. So you've got your ball, you just massaged your feet. So just give your chest a little massage too. If you don't have a ball, just use your fingertips. So start to massage the right side of your chest, rowing your arm back, reaching out beside you, behind you, just really opening up the whole expanse of your range of motion. And as you do that, press into the muscles of your chest. Create some resistance to the range of motion so that it helps to really massage the muscles. Start to massage the side of your neck on the same side, the right side, and even into the back of your neck. Make sure you don't cross over your spine, so just stay on one side of the spine. So we'll get some of this stress tension out of the neck and shoulders. This place where we carry the weight of the world, right? Even if we can't physically do something about what might be happening, we still carry it as if we could. So we're going to help to just release some of that tension that isn't helping us. Good. Okay, so with the ball in your uh, right hand, go ahead and massage the left side of the chest.
Keep breathing, keep your legs soft. And then move into the side of the neck and to the back of the left side of the neck, right up into that ridge, the cranium, the lower bone there that connects to your spine. And just knead the area, massage the tension out of the neck or at least create an opening, right? Just some softening there. So anything that could let go might be able to now. Good. Okay. Let's set the ball down and do some big shoulder circles. rock up onto your toes and then come back down. You can use your arms for balance. Good. We're going to stand in mountain pose, feet about hip width apart. Inhale and reach your arms up. And then exhale, dive forward with a flat back and come to your block or blocks and you can let your head go and just rest here for a couple of breaths. Release the weight of your head. Release the tension in your jaw. And choose a sound, just let a sound come out of your mouth that your body needs to let go of. And do that a few times, let your body make a sound. Good. So now we want to come up protecting the back. So start to look up, look all the way up, and then engage your belly and come halfway up so you've got a flat back. Good. And then arms out to the side and reach all the way up. And hands to your heart. Good. Okay, so let's continue with what she says. 100 blessings a day requires an early start. Eyes open. Thank you. Breath flowing, thank you. Standing upright, thank you. So eyes open, thank you. So let's do a little bit of some care for our eyes. So I have my glasses on, so I'll take those off. So we're gonna just rub our hands together, rub them together, get them warm. Good, and then we're gonna do this. We're gonna actually massage around the orbit of the eye. So right around the bone, the bone that is around the eye itself. We're gonna just go in circles, massaging. You'll pass over the temple area. You're gonna get into the part of the eyebrows and just do little circles, gentle circles. You'll massage over the bridge of your nose. And if you get to the bridge of your nose, you can actually drag your fingers down and add an angle a little bit because you've got some sinuses in there too, which I'm sure for many of us are uh, inflamed because of the air quality. So we'll do that. Then we'll go around one more time. Massaging the muscles that are around the eyes. And just giving some gratitude to the eyes and then cupping the hands over the eyes without touching them, just cupping, blocking out the light and take a few deep breaths. <sighs> Thank you for my eyes. Thank you for opening my eyes. This is a blessing, one of our daily blessings in the Sidur. Pokeach Ivrim, for opening the eyes of the blind. So start to remove your hands and open your eyes and just look around you. Notice that you see colors, you can see light, you can see things near and far with or without the help of you, any glasses or contacts, which is also a miracle. 
breath flowing. Thank you. Let's flow our breath consciously with a uh, breath of joy. So we're going to bring our stance a little wider and we're going to inhale three times. So sniff the air, arms up, sniff the air, arms out, sniff the air, arms up. So now your lungs are full and then let it go. Breath of joy. Two more. Good. Stand in mountain pose. Notice how you feel. Notice if there's a little more life force moving through your body, maybe your brain is a little more awake. Not only are we breathed, right, when we're sleeping and we don't have to think about it, but we can actually consciously change our breathing to affect our nervous system, which is amazing, and to affect pain control and just everything that's happening in our bodies, we can actually help with our breath. Standing upright. Thank you. Okay, so just feel your feet on the ground. I want you to rock your weight from one side to the other. Shift forward and back. Come up onto your toes. And just feel yourself rooted in to the ground beneath you. That we stand upright is a miracle. Her next line is Sun rose, thank you. Ground firm beneath my feet, thank you. So sun rose, thank you. So we're gonna do a little bit of a modified sun salutation. So I will do a modified version and do whatever you can, whatever feels good, and do it at your own pace. So if I'm a little ahead of you, don't worry about it. All I care about is that you're breathing and that you're moving mindfully. So I'll go sideways on my mat. We're gonna inhale and reach up, and then exhale, fold forward. Go ahead and come to your knees, and breathe here. You wanna maybe have your, maybe have your blocks handy at the top of your mat. We're gonna step that right foot forward, so we're in a kneeling lunge. You're on your back knee. At any time, if you want to be in a, a lunge, not on your knee, that's completely up to you. I'll stay on my knee. And then we're going to inhale, reach up into this lunge, looking up. Open heart. Opening up the hip flexors on the left side, hips on the right side. And bring your hands down. And then bring your leg back so you're back on your knees and keep your belly engaged. Elbows close to your body, lower yourself all the way down to your belly. Legs are straight behind you. Hands are flat on the floor, kind of near your rib cage, like halfway down. We'll inhale and come into a baby cobra. And lower down. Now engage your belly quite a lot. Press into your hands and come back up two hands and knees and then change sides bring the left foot forward as you're ready bringing arms up hands come down step the front foot back again so you're on all your knees shift your weight forward lower yourself down nice and slow Inhale, come into your baby cobra. Your neck is long, your legs are straight and firm, and you should be able to lift your hands off of the mat. So we're strengthening the muscles of the spine and supporting our adrenals here, which is really important for stress. Lower down, and then tuck your belly button, bring it in nice and tight, press into your hands. Come back to child's pose. Good, we're gonna stand up now. 
and we'll move into the next part of our poem. She says, in every challenging situation, thank you for courage. At every difficult conversation, thank you for patience. Okay, so let's just move our bodies in my favorite pose that for me represents courage. We'll take a, a warrior two pose. So um, step your left foot out, bend the left knee, and line up your front heel with your back arch. You might want to move your back leg inward a bit and open up those arms. Thank you for courage in difficult situations. Drop your back hand and lift your front hand up. A little back bend here. For courage during difficult conversations. And then float your hand back to warrior two. And then we're going to windmill the arms down toward the floor and come onto the toes of the back leg. Take your time. If you want to come to your knee, go ahead and do that and flatten your back foot or you'll stay in your lunge. Belly's pulled in. So you're gonna keep your right hand on the floor or on a block and just bring your left hand to your hip and start to twist toward your left side. Maybe the arm will come up. And then come back and start to step the back foot forward a bit and then just rotate yourself around. And we'll take our warrior two on the second side. So setting up your, the bottom of your body, the base of your pose, bending that um, right knee, opening up those wings, gazing over the right hand, breathe. Thankful for courage in challenging times and exalt your warrior drop your back hand and lift your front hand and breathe in breathe float your hands back to warrior two and then windmill your hands down to frame your front foot your right foot come under the back toes either stay there or come to the knee and then left hand stays on the floor and start to twist. And come back to center and walk the back foot back up. So now you're gonna be long on your mat and rise up so the toes are facing away from the body heels are pointed in and just take a few breaths here she says in every challenging situation thank you for courage after every difficult conversation thank you for patience boy do we need that with every disappointment thank you for hope for every physical discomfort thank you for strength at each accomplishment, small and large, thank you. So just this gratitude abounds. It's really this reframing of all things, right? When we're disappointed, thank you for hope that things can get better. So we're gonna open up the arms, our knees are softly bent. Shoulders slide down the back. Bring your hands over the heart. Feel your heartbeat. Breathe in gratitude. And as you breathe out, create a, an energy of sharing, of giving. And breathe in gratitude. Hope. And breathe out that hope. Breathe in gratitude for patience. And exhale all the patience that you have to give. Breathe in courage. And then breathe out, share your courage with the world. 
and breathe in and let your hands settle over your heart. Walk your feet back in toward each other and just stand here, filling up every cell of your body with gratitude, with the ability to dig very deep when we need it most and express our thanks. We're gonna to come to the floor and I'm going to invite you to find your Shavasana pose. So uh, you might wanna take a final twist or some last stretch that your body needs. Anything that your body is asking for, take the time now to give yourself that. Whatever shape that you've chosen to rest in, begin to release all effort in your body. Just let the muscles start to soften over the bones. Let your skin soften over your muscles. Letting go of all effort, knowing that the work that you've done in your body and for your body creates the fertile ground for your soul to do its work, for your heart and your mind to come together and reflect during this potent time. Letting go. And as you hear the sound of the bell, let that invite you to take a deep breath and to release. Every time you hear the bell, release your body twice as much as the moment before.
It takes all day to get from one to 100. A beautiful pink cloud at sunset, thank you. The silence of the night, thank you. The stars spread across the sky, thank you. The love of a spouse, a partner, a parent, a child, love for myself, thank you. The renewing power of sleep, Thank you. All day, every day, 100 times a day, I ask for one thing. Please receive my prayer. I am alive in your house and I am so very grateful. Baruch Adonai, Mekor Nefesh Kohai, Baruch Adonai, Mekor Nefesh Kochai. For life, for health, for hope, for beautiful, bountiful blessings. All praise to the Source, all praise to the Source of Being. Baruch Adonai, Mekor Nefesh Kohai. Baruch Adonai, Mekor Nefesh Kohai. For life, for health, for home, for beautiful, bountiful blessings. All praise to the Source, all praise to the Source of Being. Allow your breathing to deepen. And invite some small movements from your body to help you awaken to your surroundings, to your senses. And take all the time you need to begin to rise up. Perhaps a hand on your heart and a hand on your belly or somewhere that feels connecting to yourself, to your deepest self. And although you will stay muted on your end, I feel that I will hear and feel your words as we join together in this call and response closing prayer. May all beings be safe. May all beings be free. May all beings be healthy. May all beings feel peace. May it be so. Kenya Hi Ratzon. Shalom. <laughs>